So once again, it's that time of the week, or I guess time of the month. It's time to talk about some of the major discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope. Except that in the last few months there were just way too many. And so instead, in this video, we're going to focus on some of the main discoveries when it comes to distant galaxies, and also potential resolutions to mysteries of very distant galaxies that at first did not make sense. Although in this case we're only going to focus on some of the most recent discoveries from just the last few months, with the main emphasis being the discoveries that kind of surprised the scientists at least a little bit. Or at least discoveries that were way different from what someone expected, or from what the scientists thought they would find. And though they're not going to be in any specific order, there are approximately 5 main discoveries in this video. And the second part of this video, that's going to be coming out really soon as well, is going to touch on a slightly different topic. It's actually going to specifically discuss the galaxies that really shocked the scientists in the first few months of James Webb operations. And we're actually going to discuss how they are no longer shocking and what the scientists learned about these galaxies in just the last couple of months. You can learn more about this in that video that should be either in the description or coming out really soon. But anyway, so what exactly did the James Webb find in early to mid-2023? Well, it's actually kind of difficult to tell, but this image alone tells us that the answer is a lot. For example, this image contains something like 45,000 different galaxies in a relatively small patch of space. But interestingly, in this image alone there are approximately 700 candidates that existed in the universe between 370 and 650 million years after the Big Bang. In other words, these were high redshift galaxies. And 700 is way way more than the scientists expected to find in just a few days of observations that were conducted by the James Webb. Pretty much all of the early galaxies in all of the images before that all resembled little red smudges. But in a lot of those cases, it was impossible to determine the exact distance. As a matter of fact, we only knew the redshift for these galaxies, but determining the exact distance based on redshift alone was usually not very accurate. Mostly because in some cases, some galaxies are just more red naturally. Or they might contain a lot of dust that can actually block a lot of light, with the distance appearing much farther than it actually is. But James Webb Space Telescope has one advantage. It's able to create very accurate spectral data, showing us different frequencies from these very distant galaxies. And by having a much wider spectra of different, I guess, colors from a distant galaxy, the scientists can then extremely accurately determine the distance to a certain galaxy. Which is what the scientists have actually been doing in the last few months, ever since a lot of these earlier discoveries. And so, for example, a lot of the recent studies focused on this really interesting galaxy that was discovered even before the James Webb, known as SPT0418-47. Here you can sort of see how this galaxy was reconstructed from the initial gravitationally lensed image. And though this is not the most distant galaxy, the region around this galaxy and the galaxy itself have already provided a lot of intriguing data. So first of all, the light from this galaxy came from the universe when it was only about 1.5 billion years old. But in this light, the astronomers have noticed that there seems to be a presence of what's known as PAH, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Intriguing organic molecules, cyclical carbon molecules, that might have even served as the initial building blocks for a lot of organic molecules that led to life. Although here on Earth, we usually associate these molecules with things like smog, various oil compounds such as benzene, or even soot produced by a typical fire. But when it comes to space sciences, finding pH somewhere out there usually indicates very active star formation. Because usually these types of dust grains drift between various stars following various supernova. But they're also really good at absorbing light and then re-emitting it as infrared. Which is of course how the James Webb was able to see them. And so here these molecules indicate very high production of stars completely unexpected for a galaxy so early in the universe. And more importantly, it doesn't seem to be uniformly distributed. In other words, it doesn't seem to be all in one place. It seems to be in various chunks around the galaxy, possibly suggesting some kind of a disturbance within the galaxy itself, or maybe interaction with something else. So for example, maybe we're looking at a galaxy that's colliding with something else, or is being tidally disrupted by something else. And that turns out to be maybe the case, as described in this paper, released not so long afterwards. By studying this initial galaxy completely by accident, the scientists discovered a potential partner. A partner that might be only 20,000 light years away from the main galaxy. Implying that this galaxy might not be alone, but is indeed interacting and colliding with something else. But what surprised the scientists is exactly what this thing was. It was another galaxy, 
but it seemed to contain metallicity very similar to our own sun. In other words, various elements such as carbon, oxygen, nitrogen seem to be in exactly similar proportions to what we expect from a much older object that's at least 4 billion years old. Such as our sun that went through several generations of stars exploding, collecting dust, exploding again and building heavier and heavier elements. But in this case this is a young galaxy, only 1.5 billion years old, which implies that it must have had extremely active star formation with huge amounts of different supernova and huge amounts of elemental enrichment that must have happened very very fast. And based on the amount of nitrogen relative to oxygen, it really implies that this galaxy must have evolved super fast. The metallicity here is typical of a star that's about 13 billion years old, which means that these stars must have evolved at least 10 times faster. But because this unusual galaxy is very close to that other galaxy, with a lot of polycyclic aromatic compounds in them, at the moment this is probably one of the more intriguing objects to study and the object that's probably going to bring even more discoveries in the future. So at least for now this is just another mystery we're going to keep track of, waiting for some more observations and more studies. Then we have this other discovery of another really unusual galaxy, currently referred to as GS9209. This one must have formed 600 to 800 million years after the Big Bang and it seems to be the earliest galaxy of its kind that we've found so far. But what makes this strange? Well first of all it seems to be around 10 times smaller than our own galaxy, the Milky Way, but surprisingly it seems to also have the same number of stars. In other words it seems to be a much denser chunk of stars in a much smaller volume. And more importantly this galaxy is now what's known as quiescent. It does not produce any more stars, at least for now. And here the scientists believe that all this is most likely because of some kind of a massive black hole in the center that first of all collected all of these stars, but then through very powerful emissions and through a lot of galactic wind, shut down the star formation, making this galaxy quiet. Although in this case the light from this galaxy is coming from the redshift of 4.1 or essentially when the universe was about 1.25 billion years old. But intriguingly this galaxy has not produced any new stars for at least 500 million years. And the only explanation so far is the presence of a really massive black hole potentially even 5 times larger than what we expect from a typical galaxy of the same size. And so here the surprise is that this galaxy is just as massive as the Milky Way but no longer produces new stars despite being only maybe about 500 million years old. Which once again reminds us of how extremely powerful some black holes are and how they're able to control galactic evolution. Then we had another first discovery. The discovery of the first protocluster. Or essentially an object that one day is going to become a really massive galactic cluster similar to the ones we usually observe in the night skies. For example the famous Virgo cluster that contains the M87 galaxy is somewhat similar to what the scientists believe is forming here as well. And so here the scientists discovered 7 individual galaxies that at first appear to be random but are actually at exactly the same distance and are slowly coming closer together. This is when the universe was only about 650 million years old. And so because they all seem to be at the same redshift and also all appear to be moving toward one another, this essentially shows us how clusters formed billions of years ago. And previously it was actually kind of impossible to study the evolution of galactic clusters, mostly because seeing these galaxies together so far away was kind of impossible. But the instruments on the James Webb were designed specifically for that and are thus able to see these independent galaxies that are definitely forming a larger structure, eventually forming something really massive in the process. And then of course we have the biggest discovery or I guess the biggest confirmation of four farthest galaxies confirmed to date. Here the age of the universe was between 300 and 500 million years old. And the important part of this confirmation is how accurate these measurements are so far. Apart from just measuring the redshift, here the scientists were able to collect very precise galactic spectrum, allowing them to double check the accuracy of redshifts and determine their exact distance. And the farthest galaxy so far is the one you see right here that we have discussed not so long ago. The redshift is 13.2 when the universe was just about 300 million years old. But unlike previous speculations or I guess some of the more erroneous assumptions, these galaxies do not break any assumptions we had about the way the universe evolves. These galaxies are not particularly developed, they're also not particularly large, and specifically the stars in these galaxies are also on average much smaller, or I guess to be more specific, less massive, which of course implies that these galaxies have only started evolving and thus do not violate any ideas we have about modern cosmology. 
Although here I've discussed this in more detail in the video you can find in the description. But once again, what is surprising is how fast these galaxies seem to be forming stars. Even though they don't appear to have any complex elements, the actual star formation is ridiculously fast, making these extremely active galaxies creating hundreds if not thousands of more stars than a typical galaxy in the modern universe. And last but not least, we had this unusual discovery. A very unusual galaxy that seems to be really small in size, that already existed when the universe was only 500 million years old. But what makes this galaxy really unusual and somewhat exciting as a discovery is actually its size. Not because it's big, quite the opposite. Because it's so tiny. It seems to be only about 50 light years across. We're talking about something that's about a million times smaller than the Milky Way. But it's forming just as many stars as the Milky Way is today. Which of course makes this a really strange discovery. A tiny, very compact galaxy, smaller than most galaxies we've seen today, but a galaxy that's still forming huge amount of stars. Enough to be seen from this distance by the James Webb. So yet another unusual discovery that we're going to be definitely following up on once the scientists discover something else. But overall, so many different exciting discoveries coming from distant universe and so many unusual galaxies that we never really expected to find until recently. And definitely so many more exciting discoveries to come once the scientists conduct more observations. Remember, this is only after like a few days or even a few hours staring at the same spot. And even that resulted in some incredible discoveries already. And so once the telescope is ready to conduct its first official deep field observation, we're going to be seeing so much more. But even now there are so many new releases and still so much more data to be analyzed and so many other things to talk about in some of the future videos. For example, there are some other images released here that still have not been analyzed very thoroughly and have just been released as a part of a general observer program. And we also have a lot of observations of nearby galaxies conducted by both James Webb and the Chandra telescope seeing everything in both infrared and x-ray light. And at least for now we mostly just have the images and not the actual analysis yet, but even these images are just absolutely mind-blowing, showing us so much detail nobody has ever seen before. Which means that we're going to be discussing some new discoveries from the James Webb relatively soon once again. And on that note, check out some of the previous videos in the description, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.